Church. Thanks so much for taking the time. Welcome to Mary Hill Parish Church um, for the next um, hour or just short of um, you're in the right place. Um, thanks for joining us once again um, for Sunday service. And our theme this morning is the third of, of a story that's taken us through Lent, Jesus meeting different people, changing their lives, meeting them where they are. But intertwined through that, we have um, the joy of what's been a beautiful week. And indeed, today is a beautiful week too. Spring has sprung. And it's in this time of year um, and this uh, weather um, that we read these stories, that we um, our stories become intertwined with the Easter story of Jesus heading to Jerusalem to die um, and rise again. And these stories are so um, precious to us um, and they give us hope. Um, and they help us make sense of our own lives. So thank you and welcome for, um, well, thank you for joining us this morning and welcome to everybody. I've got a few people helping me in the service today. I've got um, Jackie and, and I don't know if Brian's helping Jackie with the um, opening prayer and the opening words. And then I've got Shane and Jim helping me with the Bible reading. The story of Lazarus is what we're working with um, today. Um, You'll uh, be amazed at the fun that we had um, with the young people. Um, for 10 weeks, um, the Super Sunday Club's been meeting at 10 o'clock and all the kids have been in. They've been having a great time um, with their, um, their Bible stories and their songs. Let me show you just a tiny little bit of, of the fun that they've been having, just so that you can get a wee feel for the kind of challenge that was set this morning and, and through Easter. your turn um, if you want to dress up as a mummy and shake it all off you'll see why that links with today's story but also the whole Easter story we'll be collecting um, efforts as we go um, and let me share um, the PowerPoint with you this is the story of Lazarus and a contemporary tale um, a story that resonates with us um, just as much today as it did 2000 years ago and glass um, as Lazarus comes forward from um, the tomb and it gives us a glimpse of Easter this story just as the weather is giving us a glimpse of Easter and I suppose that's why I chose this photo to go behind the the words that will be our, our opening words here today can we see Easter yet do we get a glimpse of Easter today. But as we look at the words here, I pass over now to Jackie, you there? Yep, I'm here. Right, thank you. As Lent continues to stretch out before us, stones scatter the wilderness and questions unfold in the places we pass through, waiting to be spoken by journeyers. As we continue to let go the vestiges of a faith that offers safety and finding ourselves with less protection and more honesty, so the questions follow us. Until the time when Lent strips away the false layers of religion and we find ourselves thirsty with questions before God. So bring on the wonder in this thirsty wilderness ready for a saviour who's the question and the answer, and who's also the way. Let's pray together. God of wisdom and love, giver of all good things, we thank you for your loving kindness. 
and for your constant care over all creation. We bless you for the gift of life, for your guiding hand upon us and your sustaining love within us. We thank you for the companions of our way, for all that inspires us each day and the trials that teach us to trust in you. We bless you for Jesus Christ, your son, our saviour, who calls us now to stand firm and embrace the beauty of his way. We come this morning to worship you, to ask for forgiveness for all the times we've let you down and to bring to you our prayers for others. Bless with your comfort all who are in trouble or in pain. Heal those who are sick. Support those who are dying. Console those who mourn. Supply the wants of those who are in need. And be near to those whom now we name in a time of silence. Lord, bless those whose world has been turned upside down by natural disaster or war. And those who have and will feel the effects of this pandemic much more than we ever will. Bless our homes that love and joy may dwell there and keep those who are absent from us within the protection of your love. We thank you for your people of every age and place and for those dear to our own hearts who kept the faith on earth and have entered into the joy of your heavenly presence. Inspire us by their example, encourage us by their fellowship and bring us with them at the last to glory, to glory everlasting. For we bring, the, we bring these our prayers through him who taught us how to pray, saying, Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jackie, and thank you, Brian. Now, as we think a little bit more about this glimpse of Easter that we've experienced this week, um, I've asked my dad to help us think a little bit um, about this and I'm wondering whether he's able to um, speak to us now. Yes, I'm, I'm here. I don't know whether I'll be able to come up to your expectations in saying something about Easter. Yesterday, as we know, uh, uh, Saturday was the exact date of the first day of spring, the spring equinox, when we in the Northern Hemisphere begin to see the lengthening of the day and the movement towards the sun because the earth actually tilts nearer the sun and so we enjoy its warmth to a greater extent. Um, but it's also the fifth Sunday in Lent uh, and that's why we're looking at the resurrection of Lazarus. Uh, John doesn't give many miracles in his gospel as opposed to the other three gospels but he gives signs when they are miracles, like the healing of the blind man and others that we've looked at. And this one of Lazarus is the seventh sign of eight. And the eighth one is the resurrection of Jesus, which we will come to next week. I have a poem here that speaks about these two things, about spring and its significance to all of us and the resurrection, which we are speaking about with Lazarus and next week about Jesus, saviour of the world. This poem is very short. It says, and it's entitled, 
I will plant my seeds. I will plant my seeds, choose hope over expectation, will seek for cynicism to be confounded and for life to grow in the dark. I will create again, just as I was created, will offer up all that I can from dirt and spade and blistered hands. I will stand up straight. I will face the morning. I will think a kind thought of me, then do the same for others. I know, I know, best laid plans and seedlings fail, and even long established roots can be frozen in the frost. I know all this, and yet, I will plant my seeds again and wait for her spring. I thought I might do a Monty Dawn, and um, a, my wife loved uh, uh, plants and flowers and bulbs, and so I'm going to take you out. I, I take the bulbs out each year, I always did that, and put them in the shed where they were safe and, and, uh, and where they could dry out, and then I would bring them back and put them back in. And this is just one wee section in one pot of tulips. Um, and, uh, and I call them my choir to Mabel. So I put those in earlier in the year and I call them my choir to Mabel because they look like a little, when they open, it looks as though their mouths are, are singing and uh, it enables me to think of a great wife. But you know, in all the funerals that I would conduct up at Mary Hill uh, crematorium and, and the, the cemetery, and Stuart and Anthony will concur with this, at this time of year, the trees are leafless, everything around is dark and dank, and I would say, and yet, and yet, these seeds will produce the snowdrops and then the crocuses, and then the daffodils, and then the tulips, and then the sap rises in the trees, producing leaf, and then buds, and then bursting into flower. And if God does this in nature, how much more does he do it in the human experience of that which is a seed that must die in the ground in order to produce new life. And that's what we think about in, in the resurrection of Lazarus, ahead of as the seventh sign, ahead of the eighth sign of John's gospel of the resurrection of Jesus and the promise that his resurrection holds for us in life and in the life that's to come. Thank you so much, Dad. That's a perfect um, way in, introduction to us, um, into the theme for today. I want to share with you some music that takes that further on. Um, it's a song that um, I'm very fond of by Susan Ennan, and it's called Bring On The Wonder. And here she is singing it from our lockdown shed. stars anymore living here let's go to the hills where the outlines are clear bring on the wonder bring on the song I pushed you down deep in my soul for too long I 
fell through the cracks at the end of our street Let's go to the beach, get the sand through our feet Bring on the wonder, bring on the song I pushed you down deep in my soul for too long We got it all wrong We pushed you down deep in our souls for too long I don't have the time for a drink from the cup Let's rest for a while till our souls catch us up Bring on the wonder, bring on the song I pushed you down deep in my soul for too long got it all wrong We pushed you down deep in our souls So hang on Bring on the wonder Bring on the song I pushed you down deep in my soul For too long I've got Shane lined up to read the first part of, of John 11 and Jim Hamilton for the second half. And it's the story of Lazarus, um, as it's already been alluded to. Shane, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Yeah. Great. A man named Lazarus who lived in Bethany became sick. Jesus loved Martha and his sister and Lazarus. Yet when he received the news that Lazarus was sick, he stayed where he was for two more days. Then he said to the disciples, let us go back to Judai. Teacher, the disciples answered, just a short time ago, the people there wanted to stone you and you are you planning to go back? Jesus said, a day has 12 hours, doesn't it? So those who walk in broad daylight do not stumble for they see the light of this world. But if they walk during the night, they stumble because they have no light. Jesus said this and then added, Our friend Lazarus has fallen asleep, but I will go and wake him up. The disciples answered, If he's asleep, Lord, he will get well. Jesus meant that Lazarus had died, but they thought he meant natural sleep. So Jesus told them plainly, Lazarus is dead, but for your sake, I'm glad that I was not with him, so that you will believe. Let us go to him. Thank you, Shane. And now I'm looking for Jim Hamilton to lead us on from there, um, selected verses to take us to the end of the story. When Jesus arrived, he found that Lazarus had been buried four days before. Bethany was less than two miles from Jerusalem and many Judeans had come to see Martha and Mary to comfort them about their brother's death. Mary arrived where Jesus was and as soon as she saw him, she fell at his feet. Lord, she said, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. Jesus saw her weeping and he saw how the people with her were weeping also. His heart was touched and he was deeply moved. Where have you buried him? He asked them. 
Come and see, Lord, they answered. Jesus wept. See how much he loved him, the people said. But some of them said, he gave sight to the blind man, didn't he? Could he not have kept Lazarus from dying? Deeply moved once more, Jesus went to the tomb, which was a cave with a stone placed at the entrance. Take the stone away, Jesus ordered. Martha, the dead man's sister, answered, there will be a bad smell, Lord. He had been buried four days. Jesus said to her, didn't I tell you that you would see God's glory if you believed? They took the stone away. Jesus looked up and said, I thank you, Father, that you listened to me. I know that you always listen to me. But I say this for the sake of the people here so that they will believe that you sent me. After he had said this, he called out in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. He came out, his hands and feet wrapped in grave cloths and with a cloth around his face. Untie him, Jesus told them, and let him go. Thank you, Jim. Let me show you just a uh a few thoughts around that passage. A man named Lazarus is ill. You know what it's like, itchy throat, watery eyes, clammy skin, high fever, swollen glands, can't keep anything down. Lazarus is ill. And his illness is not just another bug going around, this illness plans to kill him. His two sisters, Mary and Martha, send a message to Jesus, and it's a short message, a one-liner. Your friend is ill. What a strange and surprising message. I'll tell you why. The message doesn't request anything. It simply informs Jesus of the condition. But whenever Jesus meets someone with a need, he's the one who poses the question. And so he asks, what is it you want me to do for you? Now, it doesn't seem to matter who it is that Jesus meets. The question is the same. What do you want me to do for you? I wonder what we would make of a question like that this morning. What is it that you want from Jesus? And it's curious, and I don't want to be presumptuous, but I think I might know your answer already. Most of you here would reply, I'm fine, thanks. I'm okay. Really, I'm fine. And that's fine. Self-reliance is a good thing, an admirable thing. To just keep on keeping on, it's good, it's fine. But it can also be dangerous because there will come a point in your life and if you haven't experienced it at some point this last year, then I'm amazed, where you'll be swept off your feet. You won't know what to do. And some kind soul will come along and say, are you okay? Is there anything I can do for you? And you'll say, I'm okay. I'm fine. And you're not fine. You're not okay, are you? Well, this story we read about today is about such an event. It's a very important story as we lead up towards Easter and how we understand what happened on the cross and what happened three days later. But it's also an important story when we consider what it is to be completely lost and to lose all hope. So here's how it plays out. The sisters of Lazarus, Mary and Martha, send a message, your friend is ill. They don't request anything from Jesus. They don't say, just say the word and Lazarus will be healed. Nor do they say, come right away. They only say, Lord, your friend is ill. Now maybe Jesus is reading into the single line of the message. We just don't know. Maybe he thinks, okay, no rush and continues doing what he's doing for three more days, doesn't sound like a very good friend who hears one of his best friends is sick and then stays put. And then in two days of staying put, Lazarus gets from bad to worse and then from worse to dead. Here's what I'm thinking. Perhaps Jesus knows how it all works, life and death, death and life and what happens. In short, Jesus knows the answer that if we live or if we die, we belong to God. 
And so when word comes of Lazarus' death, Jesus then begins his journey. Now we might say it's too late now. Lazarus is dead, there's nothing more to do. But dead end signs do not deter Jesus. He keeps on walking, even when there is absolutely nothing on the horizon that smacks of hope. On the edge of the village, Jesus meets Martha, the first sister, who informs him that he not only missed Lazarus in the ICU, he missed Lazarus' funeral. And then Mary, the second sister, comes to meet Jesus. She goes to Jesus and falls on her knees before him and broken hearted, she says, Lord, if you'd been here, my brother would not have died. And I don't know whether it was her words or whether it was her tears because something broke in Jesus. And we are told that Jesus wept. Popular science tells us that many of us no longer weep. That when we see pictures of dying children, um, dying of hunger, we change the channel. And when we see with our own eyes people with no home and no hope, we cross to the other side of the street. When someone close to us dies, we don't talk about it. We're fine, we're okay. We're just keeping on, keeping on. Well, I don't know. I find it really helpful that Jesus wept. And by the way, I don't see it as a sign of weakness. I think that tears are a sign that we're alive. Tears are a sign that we haven't given up yet. Jesus wept. And then after his weeping, everything moves on. Take the stone away, he orders them. Lazarus, come out, he shouts. And there he walks, the resurrected man, still wearing dead man's clothes. What is it you want Jesus to do for you? Not so much a question, more an invitation, an invitation to work in partnership with God, to heal ourselves and to heal others in what we recognise is a broken world. And yet in it all we can trust that Jesus knows how it all works, life and death, death and life and what happens next. Jesus knows that if we live or if we die we belong to God. This is part of the Easter story and an important part. So today I pray that God's love is known, that you experience God holding you in his hands, and I pray that you'll be able to accept his love and his helping hand, offering healing and wholeness. For this is the word of God for us today. Amen. As we make our response to that reading, that story and those reflections, let's pray together. Dear God, once again, you meet us where we are, not looking back, not examining our faults and our failures, not for the damaged goods that we are, but for the potential that you see in us. You meet us where we are. You see us. You know us, you breathe life into us and set us on our way. May we take the time today to be seen. May we hear your invitation to live, to live fully in whatever way we can, in whatever way you have shown us, using the gifts and the breath you have placed within us, that we might find you in each other, that we might serve you in unexpected ways, that we might learn and grow and give and be given and bless and be blessed. And so, may we again offer ourselves and our regular giving in service of your people in this place. For this we ask in your precious name. Amen. I have a final song to share with you. Again, another favourite. Um, Lauren Daigle is the singer, and the song is O oh Lord.
can be found I will stand my ground Where hope can be found finish our time with a blessing. May we lay down that which we do not need, but also that which we fear to let go of and trust you more. May we pick up that which we are scared to do, for we do not know where it will take us and trust you more. May we let go that which we find difficult to do, for they have been our bedfellows for so long, and we fear what we will miss, yet may we trust you more. And may we renew that which we know is worn, yet we are familiar with it. It has kept us well and we can never replace it, yet may we trust you more. And may we travel with you through the season of Lent and join with you on the way. And may the blessing of God Almighty Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be with you and all those you love. Amen.